Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. So today I wanted to take you through uh, an ordinary day that I would have, you know, on, on my work and with my workstation. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about how what my workstation looks like, uh, you know, what are the software packages that are installed, you know, what, what how do I run my Python code essentially. So uh, what typically happened is the day that I was supposed to, uh, you know, tape all of this, uh, my computer broke down. And so I decided to take the opportunity as I was reinstalling everything to show you the steps uh, exactly what uh, format and in, in what order and um, you know what are the versions of each and every package that I install. I'll share everything so that you know what exactly goes into my system right now as I run it. And this will be very useful for anybody who is uh, getting into the field of Python coding, especially for the deep learning sort of applications that we've been reviewing. So if this is of interest to you, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. So it's time for my morning fruit and then I intend to go for a run. It's 8.30, it should be good. Okay, so it's 9 a.m. I'm back from my run and 20 ab wheels. Uh, work from home has actually helped people like me to actually get your morning workout done otherwise in the morning you'd be scrambling to just to get breakfast and hit the road and then get to work otherwise uh, the bay area traffic is just horrible so so far so good and right now time for coffee so this is where all the magic happens this is my my seat and it's just by the the window so i get good light and as you can see, I have my code book open. I am working on the you know last few patches for the for finishing the build your own research internship. And that's my coffee. This coffee mug number two. And let's just get straight to it. Okay, so just wanted to share some updates with you. So I am looking into the, the model number two, and I have updated, I made some some great updates. And now we are getting a good area under the curve and precision recall curve. So just wanted to share that and I will be demonstrating how everything works uh, in this week's video. Hello again. So today was a bad day. Um, my computer broke. <laughs> um, so I was trying to install a certain package in Python and uh, I think I, I did a Conda install and it changed all the paths and now none of my computer uh, algorithms are, are, are running so it's I can't even launch Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Lab or even Spider so I'll have to probably reinstall everything in the environments but it was frustrating and I was in the middle of something uh, it was almost done it was just finishing the visualizer on TensorBoard so um, it's just it was bad <laughs> but anyways i got frustrated I, I finished up whatever i had to uh, i got a coffee and uh, right now i'm just sitting this is an amazing spot i'll show you around in a bit so this is where i sit it's at the santa clara university it's a gorgeous campus can't say enough about how beautiful it is i'm also adjunct faculty here the computer engineering department um so yeah i just come here this is my bench and sitting down here with the coffee all right so we start by step number one is to create an environment so for that we hit conda create name and I am creating this for vision based research only. Um, so, and now it exists. So now I'm going to do conda activate and I'm in, right? Now I need to install Python and it's the version that we want. It's 3.6, which uh, supports TensorFlow 1.6 and below. 
So we are going to enter the following command. Honda create minus n with res python equals to 3.6 and our conda. So this is where it is fetching Anaconda, uh, Python 3.6 in this new environment, which is the VizRes that we just created. Now I get this question a lot as to why you should use the word virtual environment. Now you might be doing different functionalities. So let's say that uh, you know you are doing more computer vision sometimes, and then sometimes you're doing more data analytics. So the sort of packages that you require for both of them can be actually extremely different. And there is one uh, major hurdle that you might jump into, which I actually bumped in was uh, I tried to update one particular package uh, without doing this virtual environment and it was not compatible. So all of my paths got, got changed and I just couldn't use anything anymore. So what I'm doing right now, which is the best practices, is to create a virtual environment and whatever packages you require, um, you actually install within it. So you can have a separate virtual environment for data science sort of projects. It could be a different one for your computer vision uh, kind of projects. Um, so you have the packages uh, installed for this. And today, the, the partition that I'm showing you is uh, the one that will run the computer vision packages more. OK, so now let's verify if everything has you know, formed in the, in the right way or not. So first of all, I will type, let's just clear this. Um, let's do conda activate vizres. Now I'm inside vizres, and I need to see if Python has been installed or not. So let me go into Python and what is so you see that the python version is 3.6.10 so your version is, is correct right all right so i am in visitors python is is downloaded and now i need a list of packages so the packages i will be uh linking right to the right right now and now let's go in and install each and every one of them one by one the first one and the most important one is tensorflow so on the install tensorflow and this is the default channel so we just say yes and just go for it same way we are going to be following for all the other packages and i'm going to be listing the commands for all of them right now Finally, I wanted to show you what I am working on finishing uh, the Build Your Own Research Internship uh, project for this week. Um, so among all, I've already shown you, uh, you know, a list of all the other packages that I've in, you know, installed. The last one that I use is the, is the front end. So in, in this case, I actually use this front end called Spider. And this is how I launch the, the Spider front end. I just say Spider end and, uh, you know, this beautiful interface uh, just pops up. Why I like the Spider uh, interface is it looks very similar to MATLAB. So people, you know, researchers who've been using MATLAB for a long time, this comes super easy to them. There is a separate variable explorer. It's It looks exactly similar to, to MATLAB where you have a variable explorer. So what are the values, uh, you know, you can actually uh, see. So if there is any debugging, you can actually start debugging right from these variables right here. And finally, what I really like about Spider 4, and this is this interface that you're looking at, uh, is the plots. So in this plots panel, you can actually see, and if you run your same code a multiple number of times, you can see how the plots uh, you know, are, are, are changing. So what I wanted to show you here is as I'm increasing my number of epochs, uh, now I can see this uh, for, for the validation data set, the ROC is actually improving. So you see, and it's it's right in front of you, so you can actually see it very easily. Uh, I think I have three different runs. So you see the first run was with 40 epochs. Uh, the ROC was only 90%. 
and then uh, when I did the, uh, you know, when I increased the epochs to 100, but by patch size was a little different. So it had about 96.23. And then uh, finally, I'm able to get up to 96.57. And again, I'm, I'm rerunning it right now. Um, so you can actually just do the cross comparison right here. And uh, I think that that's super useful to see uh, the improvement, uh, you know, over different runs. So I am excited about finishing this whole thing by the end of this week and to demonstrate and, you know, it, it in GitHub uh, going forward. So thanks all for joining me.